What's going on guys, Tao here with Big Brother Security back with another video. In today's video, I'm going to be telling you how to get started in the field of ethical hacking, which is a subset of the more broad field of cybersecurity. I made a video up here about how to get started in the field of cybersecurity. I think that focused a bit more on the blue team aspect. Today, we're gonna to be talking all about ethical hacking and what you need to do to break into this field. This video is gonna be broken down into three main parts. First, we have the fundamentals. Second, we have penetration testing basics. And third, we have advanced penetration testing. These are the three big categories I'm gonna be covering and how to break into this field. And there's gonna be a few subcategories in there and I'm gonna give you all of my recommendations on what certifications I think you should take, whether I think you should get a degree and what type of study resources I think you should use in general to help you get into this field. Section one, fundamentals. The first thing that you're going to want to do when you're trying to break into the ethical hacking field, if you have no IT knowledge whatsoever, no, no real experience or anything like that, and you don't really know a ton about all the different types of computers, but you do want to become an ethical hacker, I would recommend you start by taking three big certifications. Well, I mean, they're kind of big. They are the CompTIA Triad, the CompTIA A+, CompTIA Network+, and the CompTIA Security+. Now, I know some of you more advanced people out there might say, oh no, you shouldn't do that because they're not practical exams. And yes, I know they're not really practical exams, but I think that they're very valuable when it comes to learning the basic concepts of how computers work, how networking works, and how security works. Studying for the CompTIA A+, will help teach you about the computer hardware, and then the second part of that exam teaches you a lot about software and how it works on a very basic level. The CompTIA Network+, Plus helps teach you about routing, switching, IP addresses, and subnetting. If you wanted to do a more advanced networking exam, you could look at Cisco's CCNA, which is a far superior exam to the CompTIA Network Plus. However, for just basic networking knowledge, I think the Network Plus will suffice. And finally, you have what is probably the most important of these three, and that is the CompTIA Security Plus certification. It will teach you about things like confidentiality, integrity, availability, which is the CIA tried in cybersecurity, a very important thing. Um, it also teaches you about other things like encryptions, the different types of attack, like ransomware, etc. So it's a very important exam um, as far as teaching you all the core concepts of cybersecurity, which obviously you'll be using as you progress in penetration testing, and it's a good base level of knowledge to have. In addition, having these three certifications can help land you a basic job in something like a help desk position or maybe even a SOC analyst position. Step one and a half, a degree or two. Now it depends on your situation, but you could go for a degree, especially if you're trying to work for the state, if you're in the United States, or maybe even the federal government, or honestly, even just some private sector jobs, having a degree can really help. And while in the beginning, you might be able to get a job without a certification, having a degree or two will help you in the long run if you're wanting to get into management type positions. As even though degrees aren't necessarily the most valuable thing as far as gaining knowledge nowadays, compared to independent study, you can independent study for far cheaper and for a lot quicker and learn a lot more oftentimes than your traditional degree. They can help you in the long run because the employers do still value them when making hiring decisions, etc. If you are interested in pursuing a cybersecurity degree, I would highly recommend Western Governors University. A link, my affiliate link will be down in the description if you want to sign up there to waive your application fee. But I really recommend their Bachelor's of Cybersecurity and Information Assurance program. Um, I went through it. It's much, much cheaper than your traditional college and you can get a degree a lot faster as well. It's a much more efficient and smart based approach to learning. They do that with all their degrees. Like I like to think work smarter, not harder. And if that saves you time, that's great. The second degree that you could get is a master's in cybersecurity and information assurance from Western Governors University. I also had that degree and I highly recommend it. A lot of the assignments within the degree really are reflective of something that I think you will be doing in a real world job, especially some of the network assessment type jobs would really help you in the ethical hacking realm. Now these are not necessary and just because you have these two degrees won't mean that you're hired, but they are a very good step in the right direction if you're wanting to just learn about a whole bunch of different areas of cybersecurity. Additionally, some of these three certifications like the A+, Network+, Security+, um, along with a few others like the SSCP and Certified Ethical Hacker 
which I don't necessarily recommend for ethical hacking, are included in these degree paths. So they're really great for that reason alone. I also believe they include the CompTIA Pen Test Plus, which is another great exam, but I'm not gonna be covering that as much in this video. All right, now that you've completed section one, which are the fundamentals, you're ready to move on to the basic penetration testing section. Now for this section, I recommend that you take the eLearn Security Junior Penetration Tester Certification, and I recommend that you do the penetration testing student course along with it. A link to a review of both of these will be up here in this call card. This exam is very thorough as far as how the training goes over and teaches you all the basics that you need to know for ethical hacking. It is just a foundation. It doesn't teach you tons of advanced stuff, but it's still super great. The training is free on i and &E. I'm not 100% sure whether it includes the labs. If you really want the labs and it doesn't, then you'll have to pay $750 for a year's access, but that subscription will be useful to you in step three as well. So that's something to keep in mind. Some other resources I recommend using in step two and becoming familiar with is try hack me specifically because they have a lot of easier challenges on there and more guided tutorials to help you learn concepts and penetration testing and also hack the box you'll have to hack your way into the hack the box which is something that's pretty cool so i would highly recommend that you check both of those out and start working on a few machines now that you've completed step two which is the basic penetration testing section, you're ready to progress on to step three. Step three is gonna have a lot more volume and it's gonna take probably over a year or two to complete. And pretty much from there, it's just you extend on your learning. And once you get to this stage, you'll pretty much know what to do and what to do next. So out of these certifications that I recommend you take, I recommend that you take the eMerge Security Certified professional penetration tester exam first. You can use the INE training that you bought for the junior penetration tester exam if you decide to buy it then, as that lasts for a whole year and that should be plenty enough time for you to study for and take this exam. I highly recommend it as their study material is very well put together and very comprehensive compared to some of the other exams that I'm about to tell you about. Once you complete this exam, it'll really help prepare you for the following exams. And I would say that it's on part with the OSCP, maybe a slightly above as it, as it is a lot more real world. You have like two weeks to complete this exam and everything. I'm currently studying for it. So basically beyond this point, this is just from what I've learned, not from my actual experience as I haven't actually completed any of these exams yet. After this, I would recommend that you take the Office of Security Certified Professional Certification, the OSCP. It's a very common one and this is more so for getting past the HR firewall. It is still a pretty good exam and I've heard a lot of good things about it. It helps develop a good try harder mentality, I guess, or try, try again. Their mantra is try harder and they kind of make the exam pretty difficult. It's within a 48 hour window. So there's, it's a lot of, you know, you gotta get everything done. Um, but I do think it's probably a pretty good course. I haven't actually taken it myself. Um, the corresponding course with it is the PWK course, but it will help you get a lot of pen testing jobs as they list the OSCP as a requirement for that job. But the other eLearn security certifications will also really, really help you in that regard as well. After that, I'd recommend that you take the eLearn security certified penetration tester extreme certification, which is the top level eLearn security penetration testing certification that's not specialized. I think that it's a really good exam. I do have it but I haven't actually taken it yet because obviously I gotta do the penetration testing professional certification first before the penetration tester extreme. The bonus certifications after this you might wanna look at is the Office of Security Certified Expert, which is the OSCE. I'm pretty sure that's the next one in Office of Security's lineup. And to get that certification now, you have to do the Office of Security Certified Experienced Penetration Tester Certification, which I guess is the OSEP. Then the Office of Security Web Expert, which the corresponding course with it is AWA, and the Office of Security Exploit Developer, which is OSED for the certification. The Exploit Developer one isn't out yet, but it's one that you can um, get as soon as they release it. eLearn Security does have a lot of similar certifications to those, because basically they're more specialized versions of penetration testing courses. So if you're interested in specifically web penetration testing, wireless or whatever, eLearn Security does have some. So I would recommend that you go to those if you determine on a specialty that you really like within penetration testing. But overall, this is the big roadmap that I would say that you need to do to get into the field of ethical hacking. I am currently pretty much on the beginning of step three. Now I've completed steps one and two already. And while I am working in cybersecurity, I do not have a penetration testing job yet. 
obviously by step three you'll be doing more hack the box and try hack me and even some other stuff too it just depends on what you find and what you find interesting probably a lot of hack the box at just to practice your skills etc that's what i'm working on right now is the eorn security certified professional penetration tester exam studying for that with the ptp penetration testing professional course material and i'll update you guys when i pass that exam etc and move on to the Office of Security Certified Professional Exam. All right, so now we pretty much covered everything I had for getting into the field of ethical hacking or penetration testing. It's a really fun field and really interesting to study and get into. Very challenging for your brain sometimes. Sometimes you just have to take a step back and then come back to your work because it can be very challenging when you're trying to hack a machine and you just can't seem to figure it out. Anyways, I hope this video helped you. If it did, please leave a like and subscribe to the channel for more content just like this. I release a video every single week and a podcast every week as well. I know I said that in my last video and then I didn't, but that is because I got sick and my voice was just horrible and I couldn't really talk all that well. Um, and it would just be a pain for you guys to listen to. So anyways, in the future, unless I get sick or something, gonna be a video every week. Also turn that notification bell on so that way you're notified every time I post a new video. I'm Tao and I'll see you in the next video.